Hey everybody, welcome back to Top Dog Tips. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Samantha. I am the Editor-in-Chief here at Top Dog Tips and I love sharing uh, my personal experience with you guys and I also love to do product reviews and um, help you guys learn about everything dog related that you're interested in. So I take um, advice from you guys and suggestions and uh, one of those things that I've heard from you guys that you want to know about is how to introduce your uh, new dog to your existing dog. So this is something that is different if, you have, if you're introducing a puppy um, rather than an adult dog and it's also different depending on your existing dog if they are younger or older. So I'm going to try and explain this the best I can with the different age ranges but Basically, the rule of thumb is that the younger the dog is, the easier it's going to be to introduce them to other dogs. Older dogs kind of get set in their ways, and um, you know some of them have already developed those um, antisocial qualities, I guess we should say. Uh, that's a nice way to put it. So the first thing you need to think about when thinking about getting a new dog in the first place is, is your existing dog, is your current dog, ready for that? Do they want to have another dog in the family, do you think? And of course, you can sit down and have a conversation with your dog, and I, I understand that, but um, most of the time you can tell. Does your dog love to go to the dog park and play with other dogs? Do you have uh, family or friends that bring dogs to your home or that you go um, you know, to their home with your dog? So does your dog mix well with other dogs, or uh, is he, you know, does he kind of keep to himself when he's around other dogs? Um, age plays a factor in this, but so does breed and so does temperament. Um, so that's something that, you know, it's different for every dog. Observe your dog around other dogs and see, come here Molly. This is our little beagle mix, Molly. Um, you are all wet. You are. All right, you're going to have to lay down. So um, it's something that's different between all dogs and, um, you know, you need to know your dog and think about it from your dog's point of view. So do you think your dog is going to want another dog, a brother or a sister. Um, one thing that I can say again, observe your dog, um, how he does with other animals and uh, things like that. But um, one thing to think about is your dog's age. If you have a senior dog, chances are getting a puppy might not be the best choice. And that doesn't mean that you can't adopt a puppy and it doesn't mean that you can't adopt another adult dog. Uh, but I know from experience, we've done this ourselves, uh, we had an older boxer, a senior boxer, and we adopted a boxer puppy. Um, boxers are known for having quite a lot of energy, so the puppy was a lot for her. Um, it was definitely a lot for our older dog to take. Uh, it worked out fine. I'm home all the time. I work from home. So it worked out well um, back then. Now I'm all wet from Molly, sorry. Um, it worked out well because I was home all the time and I was able to give the puppy the attention that she needed so that she wasn't always bothering our senior dog. But if you have a senior dog um, who you think might get a little agitated with a puppy, you know that might not be the best fit. Um, I know some, actually a lot of pet parents, um, and I, I've been there and done it myself, so I, I certainly am not going to judge anybody else, but um, a lot of times when your dog, your senior dog starts aging and you start noticing that and you realize that um, you probably are not going to have many years left with your canine companion, a lot of people think that, you know, we'll bring in uh, another dog and that's going to make the transition easier. It'll make the transition easier for all of us if we're not, you know, completely dogless when the older dog passes. It might be better for you and better for your family members. Um, I hear a lot of people say that when they have kids that it's going to be an easier transition for the kids when um, you know the older dog passes if they have another one. But even though that might be what's best for the humans in your family, if it's not best for your senior dog, you really need to wait and hold off on that and wait to adopt a dog until um, you know the, the older dog's gone. So that is something to think about. Um, but that's the biggest question I think when you're bringing in another dog is, is your current dog going to want that? Because your current dog is already a member of your family. The new dog has not come into your family yet, so you need to do what's best for the current dog, um, not what's what's best for the humans in your family. So something to think about. Um, if you do think your dog's ready, dogs will take new dogs into their home in many different ways. Um, and even if you think, oh, my dog's so great at the dog park, or um, you know, we dog sit for friends and family sometimes, it's so much fun when these other dogs come over. Just that doesn't always mean that he's going to welcome a dog into his family, into his pack, 
in the same way. So be prepared for some crawling, some territorial issues. Um, it's very, very rare that you can bring in a new dog, um, puppy or adult, with a pup, another puppy or an adult without there being a little bit of territorial clashing. Um, and I certainly don't mean that there's going to be aggression and you're going to be breaking up dog fights because that absolutely shouldn't be happening. But, you know, some growling, some snarling, some snapping, that's actually okay. That is how dogs communicate. Um, sometimes when you bring in an adult dog, you will get a submissive adult dog and you won't have as many problems. Um, the, the leader, the alpha dog will take his place and the submissive dog will kind of back down and do what he's supposed to do. And adult dogs have figured that out. They know how to communicate with other dogs and that might go smoother for you. Um, a lot of times the issue comes when you have a puppy and you have an adult dog or you have a younger dog with an older dog. Um, if the younger dog hasn't been around a lot of other dogs. Puppies don't know how to communicate with other dogs. They use their litter mates, they bite them, they jump on them, they do all kinds of rowdy, crazy things to their litter mates, and eventually they push those litter mates too far. And they'll growl or they'll snap or do whatever to show that, to tell that puppy, hey, I've had enough, enough is enough. And eventually a dog gets to learn those silent cues that another dog doesn't want to play right now or another dog doesn't want to, um, you know, doesn't want them near their food or whatever the case may be. And that comes with age. But as puppies and as younger dogs, they don't know how to communicate. So they need to learn that. And if you have an older dog, um, for example, Chloe, our boxer, when we brought um, Sadie, our chocolate lab home, Sadie had so much energy. She was a typical lab. She had tons of energy. She would jump on our boxer all the time when she was sleeping. And sometimes Chloe would deal with it. Sometimes she wouldn't. And when she wouldn't deal with it, she was never aggressive towards Sadie. It was never an attack. It was always a growl or a quick snap. Enough to show Sadie, hey kid, I'm, I don't want to play right now. Um, you know, back off. And it only happened a couple of times and it was fine. If you're prepared for that, it may still make you a little bit uneasy and a little nervous when it happens, but being prepared for it, you'll know what to expect and watch your dogs. Observe them all the time. Do not leave them alone together until you're absolutely certain that they can be together and they're happy together and they're content and they can be together without needing supervision. Um, but in the beginning, supervise and you will get to notice when your dog has had enough. Um, when your current dog is getting to that point, you'll be able to tell that and you can distract the um, the other dog, maybe play with them, uh, burn some energy, something like that. If it's a puppy, especially if you see that the older dog is getting um, a little bit fed up, you know, maybe it's time to play tug of war with the puppy or a game of fetch or take them outside for a walk or something like that to burn some of that energy and give the older dog a break. Um, and if you see the snapping and you notice that, you know, to a very mild extent, that's okay. It's how the older dog is teaching the younger dog to communicate and it's how your dogs are learning to communicate with their pack members. So to a very minor extent, that's okay. Um, when you notice aggression, when, when it's, um, you know, it turns into an attack or when it becomes something that is very obviously out of aggression, um, you know, that's where you have a problem. Now, I'm not going to tell you to expect that, but certainly keep in the back of your mind that you may bring a dog into your family and it may not be a good mix and it might not just it might not be that your current dog doesn't want another dog. It may just be that these two dogs, maybe both of them are alpha dogs and they are just going to butt heads and, and struggle to find a way to communicate together. Um, so it doesn't happen often, but that is something that you may need to consider um, and it's something that you need to have a backup plan for if you adopt a dog. Um, if you're adopting from a breeder, oftentimes they'll tell you to, to bring the puppy back to them. Uh, if you have any issues, shelters and, um, excuse me, rescue organizations will do the same thing. So, um, you know, keep that in mind that you, you are going to need a backup plan if this doesn't work out. But you should be fine. Um, just, like I said, keep an eye out, watch for those signs of aggression, and never, never, never leave two dogs alone that have not had the time to bond and um, learn how to be together. So that's definitely something to keep um, in mind. So when you're introducing these new dogs, let's talk about that because this is how to introduce your puppy to an existing dog. So we wanna talk about that. The first thing that I highly recommend um, is when you're adopting a new dog, have a scent article. 
and it can be a blanket, it might be a chew toy, um, we've always used a blanket in the past, um, towels, t-shirts, something like that, anything that's going to capture and hold in a scent is going to work. Um, for example, when we adopted Sadie, when we decided to adopt her, uh, we had our older boxer Chloe, we had a blanket that I kept on, I laid out over Chloe's bed, so she slept on that for many nights, it got Chloe's scent on it, and I brought it to the breeders, and she um, gave it to Sadie to to lay on and sleep with and, and sniff and um, get used to Chloe's scent, and it bounced back and forth for the last three weeks. Um, we picked Sadie out when she was only four weeks old, and she came home when she was eight weeks old, so uh, we did the scent article, and it, those last few weeks it changed hands back and forth a few times, so both dogs got used to the scent of the other dog um, before they were even in a home together. So uh, that's a nice way to start out. You don't always have that opportunity, but if you do, I highly recommend a scent article. Uh, when you bring the new dog, the puppy, the new puppy in um, to meet your existing dog, what you want to do is put your existing dog um, outside if there's two people in your household, um, you know, like for example, me and my husband. I would have my husband take Chloe for a ride, bring Sadie in to the house, and let Sadie, let the new dog sniff around and kind of get a feel for the layout of the home and the smells around the home and things like that without the existing dog here. When the puppy is done sniffing around, it's kind of gotten used to the house, it's sort of settling in, take the puppy outside and let the existing dog back into the house and let them sniff around and get that puppy smell and get used to the fact that that puppy smell is now in their home when they settle down, you know, you'll, you'll notice, you'll see the change in, in your dog from when he's very excited and he's sniffing to when he kind of relaxes. So um, switch the dogs and do that back and forth a couple of times before you actually bring the dogs together. And when you bring the dogs together, you don't want to do it actually in the home. Um, the first meeting should be outside, um, away from the home. The existing dog may get a bit territorial inside the home, so you want to meet outside um, and both dogs should be on leashes. You want to make sure that uh, both dogs are on leashes and there are two people. You don't want to hold, try holding two dogs on a leash and keeping them apart um, or tying one dog to something and um, trying to hold on to the other dog. Ask somebody to help you if you don't have another adult in your family. Um, ask a friend or a family member to come over and uh, make sure that both of those dogs are on a leash held by somebody that can can hang on to them um, if they decide to pull and let the dogs sniff out, sniff each other on the leash at first for a good long while and you'll know again when you, you'll be able to see the signs of the dogs relaxing a little bit and kind of getting used to each other um, and then they can be let off leash but it's a, it's a very gradual, slow process. It's something that's going to take you hours, not something that's going to take you 15 minutes. You can't just bring a puppy in and let them sniff and move on. Um, you really need to take the time, take a day off from work. Make it a very gradual, smooth transition for your dog. And like I said, um, even though they they are now tolerating each other by the end of this um, afternoon, you still are not going to be able to leave your dogs alone together for a long period of time, for days. It's it's not something that um, you know happens overnight. It's something that the dogs need to get some time. Your existing dog needs to realize that this puppy isn't leaving, and the puppy needs to realize that this is its new home. So it takes time for that, um, and they should not be left alone together. You'll need to crate the puppy or um, take him to doggy daycare or uh, have a puppy play yard or something like that. Uh, where in a in a separate room where you can close the door and the dogs can be separated while you're not there because you don't want them to be together until they're completely comfortable around each other without any supervision. So uh, remember that. A couple of pointers too when uh, you're letting dogs meet each other for the first time and in that beginning phase where everybody's getting used to each other, uh, both dogs need a safe place. Now, um, for your existing dog, that may be a dog bed that they already have or a favorite place that they already have. Um, if your dog has a dog bed or a favorite place, try and put it in an area. Maybe get a, a play yard, um, a puppy play yard or a play pen and put it in there so that your dog has a way to get away from the puppy. They can go in to their bed and there's a way that you can shut a door or something like that. Um, put it in a separate room or something so that when the adult dog goes in there, when your existing dog goes in there, um, you can close the door and give them a little bit of alone time in there. Um, and for puppies, crates are a great way to do this or uh, a play yard, a play area that's for um, like a little timeout zone when the uh, existing dog has had enough, you can just put the puppy in there um, and separate those dogs. So they both have a safe place to retreat back to, a place that's just theirs that they can feel comfortable in and safe. Um, and then the other thing that I just wanted to mention really quick was to avoid punishment. Um, 
if your dog snaps or growls and you get angry at them, then they're already agitated and frustrated with this puppy and now they're getting in trouble um, and what you're going to do for punishing them is just increase that animosity for the other dog. So you do not want to show any signs of punishment or negative uh, reinforcement when they're not doing what you're expecting them to do. But it is a great thing to reinforce positive behavior. So um, if, it's, for example, they have a little a little play session, you know, reward the dog. Say, good dogs. Give them treats. Um, even ignoring um, if the older dog if you notice that the puppy is kind of going crazy and you can tell that the older dog's not super thrilled about it but they're just laying there and ignoring that's when you can go over you know and tell them that they're being a good dog maybe give them a treat and just let them know that you know I'm noticing that you're you're really working to, to deal with this puppy and get along with this puppy and I do notice that and you're doing a good job so um, positive reinforcement always never never negative um, and reinforce that good behavior and in no time you will have two dogs that get along wonderfully. If you have any other questions I haven't addressed in this video um, about how to introduce your puppy to an existing dog, feel free to email me anytime at samantha at topdogtips.com. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus, uh, and Instagram, as well as our YouTube channel. Just um, get on any of those social media and uh, look for Top Dog Tips and you'll find us. Um, again, our website is top tips.com. My contact information is there and you can always leave questions and comments there as well. Those will get back to me and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will see you next time with a product review or a, another how-to video. Um, I'm not sure exactly what's coming next but I will do something exciting for you guys so stay tuned. Thanks!